The familiar theme of New Jersey versus New York is our main event tonight as we prepare to swing on the star. And another cordial welcome to Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. I'm your host, Narnie Tokyo Rosenthal. Joined as I always am by our boxing analyst, the Prince of the City, Steve Farhood. Good to see you again, Steve. Great to be here, Arne. Vinny Mataloni, been off for six months, an unusual amount of time for him. However, he has been training with Oleg Maskaev. Said it's the best work he's ever got. I hope, though, his results are a little bit better than Oleg's words this past weekend. Well, you know, Mataloni has been off a long time, too long for a prospect. The good news is that in those five, six months he hasn't fought, He's coming in tonight at 227. That's a career low. So obviously he has not been spending that time at the dinner table and is in really good shape. All right. Well, you talk about the dropping in weight, though. He's fighting Al Torres, who not only has a rock chin, but now has a 40-pound weight advantage over Mataloni. Will that be a factor tonight, Steve? I don't think the weight factor will be anything at all in this fight, but I'm glad Torres has a good hard chin because at this point in Matt Aloni's career with 10 pro fights, he's not going to get anything out of a first-round knockout. I want to see him go rounds, and he can show us what he has. All right, a good test, and we'll be back with our first bout on Star Boxing after these words. Star Boxing is brought to you tonight by Gatorland, Orlando's fastest-growing family attraction. Verkusboro Hotels. Next time you're in Vienna, try the Verkusboro. And by Vivo Restaurant Bar and Caterers, the finest Italian food in Queens. All right, getting ready for our main event right now. Al Torres making his way into the ring. Don't let that record of 0-4-1 fool you. He's got a granite chin and just went a tough six-round fight with Israel Garcia back in November. What has he done, though, to turn things around and improve? He told us about his sparring sessions at the weigh-in today. I'm better, you know, better experience. I'm using my experience and my, uh, what I know now. You know what I'm saying? Um, more confident than, than before. All right. There's our horse walk here at Yonkers. And making his way, and you see the Italian flag flying there alongside the U.S. flag. That can only mean one thing. Vinny Mataloni's in the house. Mataloni, of course, undefeated, 10-0, seven wins by way of knockout. And that last knockout that we saw, Steve, back in October over Mike Middleton, that was about as devastating a knockout as I've seen in boxing. Yes, it sure was. I haven't forgotten it, and I've been waiting to see Mataloni ever since. If that scores a knockout like that, you want to see him again. It's been five, six months since he's fought. He had some fights fall through. I want to see him tonight. He's been very frustrated with the layoffs, but what has he been doing to keep his confidence up? Oh, yeah. He told uh, us this as well. My trainer, Bob Jackson, is also Moscow's trainer. Um, it was, it's like a, it's a step up almost, you know. It's uh, just a different style he has, you know, as a top ten fighter. And being in the ring with, ring with him is almost a confidence builder, you know. And just learning, trying to learn, pick up things like his technique and try to carry it over to my fights, that's all I could do. All right, Vinny Mataloni making his way in right now. Steve, what about the 40-pound weight advantage that Al Torres has on him? Arnie, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. That's all I got to say about that. Mataloni's in condition. Al Torres, well, one look at him, and you know he hasn't done that many sit-ups. But the sit-ups win fights. Maybe yes, maybe no. <laughs> we'll have to see. All right, but we're going to get our official introductions by the man who's going to tell us a little bit more about these pugilists, the magnificent Mark Biro. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe DeGuardia Star Boxing presents the main event of the evening, six rounds, heavyweight. Your referee for this event is Michael Ortega. Introducing the principals first, in the red corner to my left, wearing the black trunks with the red trim, weighing 267 pounds, from Atlantic City, New Jersey, the Atlantic City Express, Al Torres. Torres. His opponent in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with the Italian colors, red, white, and green, 
undefeated in 10 professional bouts. Seven wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the pride of Bayside, New York, Vinny Malalun. Malalun. Six rounds, heavyweight. All right. Chance of Vinny in the house right now. Oh, I want to say, trunks are high right here, okay? I'll be watching the low blows, watch the low blows. A little bit high on here, okay? Give me a good clean fight, touch him up, best of luck. All right, Mike Ortega finishing the introductions. A little warning for where the shorts are and what will be considered a low blow and what won't be considered a low blow. Very, very focused though. Vinny Madaloni comes out. As Madaloni mentioned, he's been in sparring with Oleg Maskaev. Said it's done tremendous things for his confidence. He feels if he can hang with somebody like that, how can Al Torres give him a problem? On the other hand, Torres has been in with Ray Mercer. Maybe we should have Mercer and Maskaev fight, Steve. There you go. That's actually an interesting matchup. But right now, Madaloni teeing off as Torres trying to smother the punches inside. Vinny wisely moves to the outside. Nice right hand counter by Madaloni. One thing about Vinny, he throws punches in combination. You like to see that from a puncher. It's not one at a time the way it is with so many heavyweights. Last time, though, he gave up this much weight was against Kevin Rozier. And what was the outcome? Fight went the distance. Torres only stopped one time in his career by Robert Wiggins, a star boxing fighter. Wiggins stopping him in the first round back in February of 99. Looks like he might be going for a second time here right now. Madaloni really opening up on Torres. Can't miss him with the right hand on. Torres stuck in a corner on the ropes right now. Trying to fight his way out. Mike Ortega deep in a really good hard look on Torres. Good move by Vinny backing off there, regrouping. He knows he could probably hit him anytime he wants. Catch his breath. But he landed a lot of big shots there and did not put him away. Hard to picture uh, Torres lasting if he gets hit with this many right hands. Torres won for low blows right there by Ortega. And right now, Madaloni trying to establish the jab. Madaloni has a good jab, Steve. Doesn't like to use it. He's putting his punches together tonight really well. Of course, his opponent is right in front of him. He's not going to get any movement out of Torres. Takes Counter good, right hand yeah. by Torres moves Madaloni back a little. That's the danger in fighting a guy who's easy to hit. You're easy to hit because you're concentrating so much on hitting him. But if Madaloni can outpunch Torres 14 to 1 as he's doing in this round, I think he'll be okay. Obviously, Torres has no knockout wins because he has no wins. Coming in tonight, 0 4 and 1. No body punches from Madaloni. One draw coming against Andre Shelton. That was back in July of last year. Good first round for Madaloni. Steve, I had another trip down to Orlando by way of Boca where my mother lives. And I took the kids over to Gatorland. And I gotta tell you, this is the most incredible place. I've never seen so many Gators in one place. To me, I'd rather be there than Disney World and SeaWorld. Right, what, what is the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? You've asked me this before. The only thing I know is that they both bite. I don't know anything about what makes a difference. I do know that Florida is the only place where they both exist simultaneously. Maybe we should have one of these things up as a mascot. And uh, what do we do at feeding time? You're going to take care of them? Or do we get Vinny Madaloni to wrestle him? Uh, I go for the latter. All right. Well, I like Gatorland. Cool place. 
Round number two. Scheduled six-rounder, Vinnie Madaloni in the Italian shorts, black and red for Al Torres. First round, all Madaloni, although as you mentioned, Steve, the fact that he's coming in winging and only thinking about hitting his opponent, he was open for a couple of counter rights like he just got hit with there. Been hit with three big right hands this round. Vinny thinking all O, no D. Well, he certainly didn't get into that habit by sparring with Maskaev. Oh, Vinny drops a nice left as Torres relaxes and drops his hands. That was a nice move because Vinny changed angles there. Torres thought he was going to just back off, go back to the center of the ring, and he showed him a different move. One thing I've always wondered, Arn, and you, you, know, you know fighters, when you hit a guy as heavy and as chubby in the midsection as uh, Al Torres to the body, does it hurt him more? Does it hurt him less? Hurts he's got him more less. insulation? Hurts him less. They're able to absorb the body shots. So I've told fighters that it's a waste. You got a guy with a belly like that, don't even bother really? going downstairs. That's my opinion. Such a, so cushioned, they don't even feel it. This is a brawl, and I think, I think Vinny's kind of shocked that Al Torres is still there. And he's landed everything. I'll give you an example. You remember James Gaines? Sure. Jeff Wooden fought James Gaines one night and spent five rounds going to the body thinking it was going to make a difference. And at the end of the night, Gaines wound a, won a majority decision because Woody punched himself out in the first five rounds. Had no effect on the body whatsoever of Gaines. Right now, though, Madaloni appears to not be having an effect on the head of Torres. Madaloni's connect rate in this fight is about 60%. Madaloni, uncharacteristically, with his back to the ropes right now. Yeah, we have to watch for signs of Vinny getting tired because uh, he's throwing an awful lot of punches. Madaloni only the six-round distance that one time against Kevin Rozier right here on the Star last March. That was a year ago. Not happy with the fact that he's been sitting out since October. Certainly the longest layoff of his career. How did you describe uh, Al Torres' chin at the start of this fight? Granite. Rock chin. What's harder than granite? <laughs> Coming near the end of the second, Madaloni throwing a lot of punches, but he's also breathing hard through his mouth. Round number three of the scheduled six rounder. These are heavyweights, Vinny Madaloni. He's in the Italian shorts, black and red. That would be Al Torres, the Atlantic City Express. Nobody's been on the floor thus far, and amazingly so, Steve. Madaloni's just been teeing off on Torres, who now is taking a fight to Madaloni here to start the third. I, I, I got to think that Vinny can't believe he hasn't put this guy down yet. He, he can't hit him with any more flush punches. Right uppercuts have been brutal. Right hands from the side. Oh, big two double rights land. Torres rocking Madaloni here at the start of the third. Torres cut. Left eye. It's becoming a pretty good heavyweight brawl, aren't he? This is a war right now. Wouldn't have expected it the way it started. We told you at the beginning of the show, throw out the record of Torres. And the prophecy's holding true. Between rounds, Bob Jackson, Madaloni's trainer, told him, step to the side. Don't stand right in front of Al Torres. Showing a little bit of movement, Madaloni, this round. Torres had a good first 60 seconds in this round. Doesn't look like he's got a lot left in the tank. That might have been it. It's 
like that cut is the corner of the left eye of Al Torres. Can't tell if it's a factor. Well, right now, it seems like a small cut, the blood coming down the side of his face rather than into the eye. But giving Mataloni a target right now, and he's having a little bit of fun with it. Counter right hand by Torres catches Mataloni, who had just put in his own combination. Mataloni's got to find a way to punch and not get hit in return. Because every single time he's been countered, there it is again. Counter right hand. That's the punch that he's got to slip. Either dip after he punches or move his head. And let's not forget the fact that he's taken a punch from with 40 more pounds on it than he has. 40 pound weight advantage here tonight for Torres, who came in at 267 to Mataloni's 227. Mike Ortega not letting him fight on the inside. Contrasting style to other referees. Tends to break the fighters a little early. Halfway gone in the sixth now. Who's going to have enough left to finish? Can't get enough of Joe DeGuardia's star boxing? Download the Star Boxing TV app or check out our Roku channel to watch exclusive content and classic fights. Every punch, every knockout, every screen. The Star Boxing TV app gives you exclusive access to every moment of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. Available on Apple, Android, and Roku. Just search Star Boxing to get in the ring. We're in the second half of the scheduled six rounder on Tokyo Rosenthal along with Steve Farhood. These are heavyweights, Vinny Mataloni. He didn't expect to see his opponent standing in front of him possibly this late in the fight. That would be Al Torres in the black and red shorts. Steve, I've given all three rounds to Mataloni, but he took some big shots from Torres in the third round, particularly in the first minute of it. All right hands, that's been the punch for Al Torres, counter right hands. Yeah, Vinny's got to figure out a way to slip that punch because, as Teddy Atlas would say, after Vinny punches, he's sticking around to wait for a receipt. And that's the mistake he's made. Torres opening up on him a little bit here. Vinny being a lot more economical right now than he was earlier in the fight through a lot of punches in the first two rounds in particular. No knockdowns, though, in the fight. Torres not even close to going down. Last couple of rounds, Arnie, Vinny Madaloni's showing a good sense of pace because learning to pace yourself is something every heavyweight has to learn eventually in his career. Heavyweights don't fight like flyweights, bantamweights, and featherweights where they can just go at it. And Vinny's in with a guy he's not putting away. He's got to pace himself. Ration those punches. Well, he's only fought five rounds of real boxing in the last year. Exactly. It's a lesson. This lesson of pacing is a lesson he has not had to deal with until tonight. Come on, baby. There you go. The other side. Bob Jackson in the corner of Madaloni screaming himself hoarse right now. Let him come to the punch. He wants Mataloni to play at his feet a little bit more and catch Torres on the way in. Right hand back to the body. There you go. Come on. He got caught with that right again. A counter right. A nice body shot by Torres. Yeah, three rights to the body by Torres. Good job. Good Good One, two. Seemed to have that cut under control on the left eye of Torres. 30 seconds to go here in the fourth. Nobody's really taking command here in this round. Mataloni not as dominant as he was in the earlier rounds. When, Mat when I noticed with Mataloni, like I said earlier, he has a real good jab, Steve. But when he doubles on the jab, he doesn't come with the right. Doesn't throw the right off the jab. Come on, Come on, 
What I mean by pacing himself, he's learning that over the course of 15 seconds, three jabs can be just as effective as big power shots. Hey, boxing fans, come out for live boxing. Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing presents Rockin' Fights. For ticket information, go to starboxing.com or ticketmaster.com. See some of the best young fighters. Star Boxing, Rockin' Fights, it's a knockout. Round number five, furthest Vinny Mataloni has been since last March. Of course, that was the six-round decision over Kevin Rozier. I think he found Rozier almost as frustrating, Steve, as Torres. But the problem was Rozier couldn't land any shots on him. Torres is dishing out a fairly decent volume of shots that are landing both to the body and the head of Vinny Mataloni. Nobody down in the fight, though. Hey, if Vinny Mataloni goes anywhere in boxing, I mean, let's be honest, it's not going to be because he outslicks his opponents or outspeeds them. He's a big, strong guy. He has to knock his opponents out. He has to impose his will on them, show them his power. He's winning this fight that way, but you want to see enough defense so that when he gets in with a puncher, he doesn't have to worry about getting caught and getting knocked out. Bob Jackson, Madeline's trainer, says, box your way home. He wants to see jabs and a little bit of movement. It's Bob's way of saying to Vinny, you're not going to get the knockout. I was about to say the same thing. He seems resigned to the fact that Vinny can't stop him. Vinny not so sure, though, because he comes in with a beautiful right over the top of a drooping left hand of Torres. He knows Torres is hurt and holding on, but Vinny can't get loose. Second warning for Budding. Torres a little reckless with the head on the inside. And he does have a big head at that. <laughs> big everything. <laughs> Bend their knees, Vinny! Bend their knees! Oh, oh, big uppercut on the inside, snaps back the head of Torres. Bend their knees! Uppercut, one of the better punches in the arsenal of Mataloni. That was the punch he used to knock out Middleton in the last fight. Virtually lifted him off the ground with the shot. Rare jab by Torres there. Again, snapping back Mataloni's head. No quit in Torres whatsoever. Torres' best, ch best chance at this point is to just lean and lie on Mataloni. He's got that big weight advantage. Oh, big right hand over the top by Torres. Catches Mataloni's left hand napping. Jackson wants Mataloni to bend his knees and drop that uppercut in. Mataloni, though, breathing very heavy through the mouth. Torres leading that extra 40 pounds of weight all over Mataloni, too. Not easy to schlep that around the ring, Steve. They're both exhausted on. Mataloni getting a second win here near the end of the fifth. And gets a warning from Ortega. Both fighters for the heads getting sloppy on the inside. Stay with us. One more round to go. shorts that would be black and red for Al Torres. Nobody on the floor in this fight. Steve, it's an amazing thing. I've got Mataloni pitching a shutout, but I don't think it's really characteristic, though, of the ebb and flow of the fight. Hey, he's winning the rounds on, on, on volume punching. I give him credit. He's looked good in that regard. He throws combinations. Look at him. He's found a little life in his legs. He's listening to his trainer who says, jab your way home. Well, I think at this point he knows he's got three minutes easily left in the tank. But is he going to coast from the outside or is he going to try one more time? I know Matt alone. He's got one more flurry in him where he's going to go to try to stop Torres. And if it happens, on, I bet you it's a right uppercut again. That's been his best punch tonight. 
We want the jam. We want the jam. We want the jam. Bob Jackson yelling, don't leave that right hand out there, Steve. And I'd be yelling if I were Bob, don't let him lean on you either. Use those legs. Maybe content to throw the jab, not coming back with the right hand. Crowd very much behind Madaloni in here. Remember Madaloni, a member of the Teamsters. A lot of Teamsters here tonight from local 282 to support Madaloni. And before we forget here, as we're coming to the end of the sixth, Steve, I think we got to send condolences out to the family of Phil Berger, great colleague of yours and mine, and sure. friend over many years, passed away recently. Not only one of the best boxing riders, but a really good guy, and he will be missed. One thing that's not missing right now is Madaloni's right and his left, landing at will as we're coming near the end of the fight on Torres. And I said Madaloni would try one more spurt on the inside and see if he can put Torres at least down. We said in our open, look for the rock chin of Torres, and it is as advertised. And right now, look for the rock head of Torres because he's butting up a storm in there. A lot of people didn't see this as a distance fight. Thought it would be a blowout for Madaloni. And although he's pitching a shutout, Torres has taken everything he's got and continues to move forward. Good lesson for Madaloni this fight. Madaloni, not, no quitting him in the end of the round either at the end of the fight. Let's loose one more barrage. Oh, and I gave uh, Torres one round. That's the best I can do for him. What round was that, Steve? I gave him the fourth. I didn't give him any, but <laughs> I give him a, an award for a lot of heart and a great chin. Well, as Al Torres on his way to be the new Mo Wilson of the heavyweight division, showing a great chin, Great hard moving forward, taking a pounding from Vinny Manaloni, who gave up 40 pounds tonight. Just how much that had to do with not being able to put down Torres, we're not sure. Maybe he'll share that with Steve Farhood after the fight. Manaloni, of course, coming out of the camp recently of Oleg Maskaev. On the other hand, Torres coming out of the camp of former heavyweight champion, WBO version, Ray Mercer. But. Madaloni, of course, tonight on his home turf. Chance of Vinny all throughout the fight. Somewhat puzzled crowd. Wondering how Torres could take that kind of punishment that Madaloni dished out. And I think um, from the tape, Vinny's going to be able to pick up a few things that he was doing wrong, though, as well, as Torres was able to land in some counter right hands and some decent shots to the body. What's the official decision? Mark Biro's got the numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, all three judges at ringside, Melvina Lathan, Art Levy, and Steve Weisfeld have scored this bout 60-54. The winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated, Vinny Madalone. Madalone. Well, Vinny Madalone improves to 11-0. Dropping down to 05 and 1, that would be Al Torres. Judges not as generous as Steve Forward was giving the fourth round to Torres, seeing it more like yours truly. Shut out at 60 54. But that's not to take anything away from the performance of Al Torres. Taking everything Vinny Madaloni had to give out and more. Dropping in a few good shots of his own. We learned also here Vinny Madaloni has a pretty good chin of his own. Taking some big shots from Al Torres. Steve Farhood's got Madaloni. Let's see what his thoughts were on the fight. Okay, Arn, thank you, Vinny. Could you believe the guy was still standing? Woo! Those first two rounds, he hit him with everything. Oh, yeah, it's, let me tell you, I hit that guy with everything. I give that guy all the credit in the world. Tough guy, 
He came to fight and he did just that. We put on a good show for the crowd, that's what I'm here for. Were you discouraged you couldn't take him out because then you, Bob told you to box your way home? Yeah, that's it, you know. First two rounds I was hitting with everything. You know, I seen the guy wasn't going. I was still frustrated. I got to overcome that. I'm still young, I'm learning. I can't let that bother me. Like my trainer said, Bob, I got a box, and that's right in the later rounds. What I said on the air was, I got to think that this is the first time in your career you had to worry about something like pacing. But yeah. th at the end, you had legs and you had energy. Oh, yeah. it's. I was in great condition. We scheduled eight rounds. I could have done eight. You know, we were in camp with uh, Moscow for about three weeks in Vegas. You know, the, 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 the endurance is there. You know, Joe like, got to the right guy. Joe got the right guy, you know. Doing the Joe, he knew we had a tough guy in there. It pleased the crowd, and that's what I got to do. The only criticism I had, he landed a lot of right hands on you, counter right hands. Yeah. What aren't you doing to get hit with bending, that Bending, bending. I'm staying straight up. Like Bob said, I'm throwing the right hand, I'm staying straight up. I got to bend, I got to come out of the weave after my finish jab, finish with the hook. I wasn't doing that. Like I said, I'm young, I'm still learning. I just got to go back in the gym, listen to what this man tells me to do, and do it, and perform it in the ring. Joe DeGuardia, the promoter that was referred to a second ago, he got an undefeated heavyweight here. He sells tickets, he's exciting, he's good looking. You got to feel good about it. Oh, this, this is a fighter. This is what boxing's about. Go out there, wing punches, have the fans come, bring them from all over the place. Look, look what he's drinking. Orange juice. <laughs> That's what he's supposed to be drinking. Is there vodka in there, Vinny? No, no vodka. All right, no vodka. <laughs> this is a fighter, and he's learning. He's got the best team behind him. He's got Bob Jackson, best trainer in the business. He's got Bob Lancelotti, top manager in the business. They care for him. They're concerned about him, and they're going to develop him. This, this is the guy. We're going to be featuring him regularly on Star Boxing. He has... Loads of teamsters come in to see him. <laughs> Loads of Italian flags. I've, I've never seen more Italian flags. Have you? It's like Vito at the Fermo's fighting here. Beautiful. Yet. Beautiful. And you know what? And when he gets in the ring, he does it. He's out there fighting. All He's action. Waiting. It's all action, nonstop, from bell to bell. He's throwing punches. I, I want to see him punch that and see how many punches he threw. Definitely. I bet you he met almost 100 punches a couple of those for early rounds. For a heavyweight, it's Yeah, it's, it's unusual. And uh, we want to keep him busy, keep him going, and he's going to be on Star Boxing's Metro Channel regularly. All right, you heard it from the promoter, Joe DeGuardia, Vinny Mataloni, still undefeated and moving up. Arnie? Thank you, Steve. A very excited Joe DeGuardia, and rightfully so. He's got a good young stallion there, and we'll be back with more on Star Boxing after these words. Hey, boxing fans, come out for live boxing. Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing presents Rockin' Fights. For ticket information, go to starboxing.com or ticketmaster.com. See some of the best young fighters. Star Boxing, Rockin' Fights, it's a knockout. Back at ringside, you know, Steve, you gotta love Matt Aloney because he's gonna make Bob Jackson's job a lot easier. He knows what he did wrong, he admits to it, and he knows what corrections need to be made, and you can't ask for more than that out of a young fighter. Right now, he's what club fighting is all about, what makes it so exciting. He's an action fighter, he's a neighborhood guy, he's a crowd pleaser, he's a heavyweight, that never hurts, and he's undefeated. So this is a guy to watch, and you hope he can take the steps to go from this club level into world-class status, but we're away, away he from talked, that. He said tonight that he thought he'd be, this fight was going to be an eight-rounder, and he was ready to go the eight. I got news for you. If he had to go that volume of eight with Torres, he might have been in trouble. Although I like the way he responded in the sixth round, the last round, it was as if something said, well, in his head something clicked, I have enough legs, I have enough punches. And he had a good sixth round. He, he let it go. So he could go eight, no problem. Especially the last ten seconds. But as always, another great night for Star Boxing. A very excited Joe DeGuardia about Vinny Mataloni, so I'm sure we'll be seeing more of him. For Steve Farhood, I'm Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal. Good night, Carrie. I'm coming home.